From the Toronto Star, I'm Sabah Etazaz, and this matters. After more than a year of exhaustion, grief, mourning, and reckoning, do we have it in us to find some sort of meaning in all of this? An artist and a poet is going to help us give it a try. Spoken word artist from Scarborough, Vandal Ajay is Ontario's first poet laureate. Unanimously appointed by MPPs for a position that was created in memory of Gord Downey. From a tough childhood in Scarborough to being nominated Torontonian of the Year in 2015, to now being Ontario's Poet Laureate in the middle of an unprecedented time, Randall's no stranger to the power of words to heal and help express pain. Randall is also the executive and creative director of Rise Edutainment, which is an organization that empowers racialized young people to express themselves through meaningful art. He joins me on This Matters for a brief conversation about his life, his work, and how he plans to bring beauty and poetry into our lives during this exceptionally dark time of the pandemic. Hi, Randall. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me as well, Sava. Congratulations on making history as Ontario's first ever Poet Laureate. And I know we're currently dealing with COVID restrictions, but what does that role look like for now? I think for now, what it looks like, and I think even before answering that question, there's something to be said about what's happening right now in the world. I feel as though folks are looking for some good news, and I'm glad that this opportunity provided that for a lot of folks in the community. And the role right now looks like doing virtual events that will connect the province. One of my goals is connecting with as many poet laureates across the province. There's about 19 poet laureates, which I did not know of. I'm hoping to connect with them and connect with their community so we can, whether it's a Zoom or on another platform, we can just find a means to chat. And I would also say in addition to that, there's just some online stuff that we're looking to do and build so that there's resources, there's toolkits and opportunities for poets to access for the time being until we can meet again in person. And until, as you mentioned, ideally in the long run, what does this role mean to you and what you would like to do with it, particularly in this time of COVID and racial and social reckonings that we've been seeing? Well, I hope to do a number of things. It means a lot to me, first and foremost. You know, my parents are very happy that I chose this path. They weren't at first. You know, when when you tell your parents you want to be a poet, it's not something that they would say celebrate. Uh, but what it means to me overall, it really means that I get to represent a number of poets that are coming up. So, so to, to be honest with you, I was inspired by a number of poets that performed on stage. And I never forget watching some poets, specifically his name is Buna Muhammad. And he was performing on stage and I was so inspired that I see myself in him. I remember seeing like, I can do that too. And I hope to be the same for other young people. I hope to provide young people an opportunity to really understand that what you're going through in life and what they're facing, what they're dealing with, poetry can be a vehicle to help them deal with some of these challenges and the stress that they're going through that, you know, drugs and anger and, you know, just kind of like the mindless gaming that is not the end all be all. But when it comes to COVID specifically, I'm hoping to one, offer the province poems that I'm hoping to create that can inspire, that can remind them that we're going through this together, that they're not alone, and perhaps opportunities for them to find ways to use poetry to express how they're feeling. I think right now there's something that's been happening over the past year about being introspective and looking at ourselves. And I think poetry is one of the greatest introspective art forms, in my opinion. And it has been a lot of introspection, a lot of thinking back. It's been also a year of devastation, grief, mourning. And we've all sort of been struggling with looking to find hope or meaning in all of this, right? So as a poet laureate, it's sort of your mandate to weave poetry into people's everyday lives, right? How do you see yourself doing that during this time which might not be particularly conducive though. Well, one of the challenges is I'm a performer and I love being on stage. I love the idea of sharing space. I think there's something sacred that happens between a performer and the audience. And it's sacred because there's a conversation that's happening without us really having a conversation, you know? But there's a moment of us being together. So obviously COVID really prevents us from truly connecting. 
there's a lot of folks that I'd love to meet, but obviously with what's happening, I won't be able to, but I, I will do my best to utilize the platform that I've been given to reach to as many Ontarians as possible, but also to say, I'm not too familiar with Northern Ontario. And for most of us that live in Southern Ontario, how many of us have gone to Thunder Bay or Timmins or Sudbury, right? Or North Bay, many of us haven't. And I'd love to connect with those communities. Although maybe my poetry may not speak directly to their experiences. I'm hoping to understand what their experiences are so I can create some poetry that is provincially panoramic, I should say. And at the same time, Randall, your work in philosophy is kind of universal in the way that it's about healing and transforming pain to power. So do you think in a way that's what perfectly places you in this role in these times? I mean, there's something to be said on the importance of arts during times of crisis, right? Absolutely. I was just listening to something from Nina Simone that says, if your art does not reflect the times, why are you creating in the first place? And so I would love to create poetry that can help anyone truly understand what's happening, because I think there's something to be said about pain and adversity. I know that pain does not discriminate. Adversity does not discriminate. And because it doesn't discriminate, I think the inevitability of it is that we have to grow from it. We have to learn from it. And I'm hoping my goal is to create poetry that can help others understand the tools that they can create in terms of turning their pain to power. We'll be right back. How has this time been like for you, what you've been observing? Is there a poem that you personally find yourself continually turning to? Yeah, there's some challenges that I've gone through, but there's a poem called Brokenness and I often kind of speak to the dichotomy of life, the dichotomy of being human. And so I think in order for us to heal, we need to be broken, right? So this is a poem called Brokenness. I know too many broken people broke into pieces they think they cannot fix. Like shattered glass, they may cut you when you try to uplift, slicing the helping hands, hoping to heal the harm that's happened to them. They often hurt in silence. Smile in your face today, but tomorrow you may hear of how their brokenness has escalated into acts of violence. We often judge these broken people and then call them names, label them sometimes forgetting that like flipping a coin, they too can change. But what does it really mean to be broken when it is broken people that have helped mend the world? I realize that in our brokenness is when our true lives unfurl. Because see, brokenness, brokenness is a sign of recreation. It is a sign of growth. But we fear brokenness because we fear the unknown and uncertainty. But brokenness can piece our holes together perfectly, sometimes permanently. After all, if you have never known brokenness, then how would you know when you were whole? If you have never been broken, then how would you measure your growth? I often turn to that piece because it reminds me that what you're going through, Randell, doesn't mean that you did anything wrong doesn't mean that you are deserving of bad. It just means that just thinking of the analogy of a butterfly, the things that a butterfly has to go through to find its beauty is a very crazy journey, right? And I think many of us are butterflies. I think collectively we're going through a period of transformation during this time. It was, uh, really spoke to me. This was a very beautiful poem, Randall. And I've been looking at some of your previous interviews and you said somewhere that you had a sense of being silenced as a young person growing up in Scarborough. Talk to me a little bit about that and what it was like growing up and living there. And do you recognize that past you in who you are now and your work? There's so many ways in which I was silenced growing up. And it wasn't just because of the color of my skin. It was my postal code. It was my background. It was my experiences. And so when I think about growing up in Scarborough, I think about this vibrant, incredible part of, of the city that is one third of the GTA, but is often pushed to the side, is often the underdog, is often forgotten in conversations. And so I like being the underdog because as an underdog, it reminds me to work harder. You know, when I think of what my parents had to do, my parents worked extra hard, harder than most folks would. And I know that's the story of many immigrant parents, right? And so I keep that in mind that there's something about this time that being an underdog, being someone who's had to overcome so much adversity, it's made this time, I'm not going to say easier, but it's developed resilience inside of me that has really informed my practice as an artist, but also my practice as a human being. 
And I think being human is a practice. You need to wake up each day and understand that there's a level of understanding and growth. I don't feel like there's perfection that lives in this world. I'm just more about progression than it is perfection. So, you know, Scarborough has really influenced the way I think and the way I show up in life because being silenced has reminded me of those that now that I have this platform, it reminds me that I can speak for those that are silenced right now. Which you've been doing through a lot of your work. I wanted you to talk to me a little bit about your work with Rise Edutainment, what you've been doing through that and what exactly is edutainment in that context? So firstly, edutainment is a term that was founded by KRS-One, who's one of the fathers of hip hop or maybe the sons of hip hop, however he chooses to say it. But it's really about this idea of, again, I don't believe in art for art's sake, personally. I believe that art has the propensity to help us dive into ourselves, to share with the world a bit about who we are and our experiences. RISE stands for reaching intelligent souls everywhere. We've created safe spaces for artists to express themselves in a positive way. We've developed curriculum and opportunities for them to learn more about the business of being an artist. We've also employed hundreds of artists and we continue to employ artists even during this pandemic. And we also connect them to opportunities that they probably would have never had. So every Monday night, just last night, you know, we had an, a number of artists that came on the love and support, even on a Zoom platform, you know, you build a culture of support and a culture of seeing vulnerability as a sign of strength. And oh my gosh, the things you can create is, is powerful. So every Monday night we've been doing it. You can find us at riseedutainment.com to find out more. And like you're mentioning, you're still continuing to engage with the community through these events and open mic nights. But how has COVID and the consequent lockdowns kind of changed that in the sense of the connect? Art is all about sort of connecting with each other. Has that changed a little bit in these virtual times? And do you feel like that could be an irreversible change? I believe it has changed in a number of different ways for obvious reasons. I want to say that as an artist, it's because I've learned so much about myself during this time, because I've learned to love myself more during this time and have been able to cultivate a deeper sense of self. It's allowed me to create from a different place. It's allowed my, my art is heavily influenced by healing and heavily influenced by resilience. And so this time has built my resilience like never before. And I think it's definitely impacted how folks show up. But at the same time, because we're looking inward, I think the poetry and the music that's being created is a bit deeper. It's more reflective of the times in our community. I can only speak for our Rise community. We've also been able to leverage this time as an opportunity to create as well, right? I don't think I would have ever had this much time to create otherwise. It seems like everybody's had to go deeper into themselves to get that connection and to find like a more genuine, more authentic connection, ironically, in these digital times, right? <laughs> How interesting is that? <laughs> yeah. So when we look at this, what we're going through the past year, what's still happening, what lessons do you think we can glean through the, the reckonings and the realizations? We know that we've collectively been through something or going through something massive, but at the same time, a lot of differences and discriminations have also been exposed, showing us that not everyone experienced this time and this pandemic in the same way. Are there any lessons, anything that you think we could take away from this? I think there's a number of lessons and because it looks like many different experiences, I don't know if I can speak to all of them, but I can speak to my experience and some folks that I'm close to. And that is to say that, one, we are all in this together. We're experiencing it differently, as you mentioned. But I think there's something to be said about being human at this time. You know, Despite all the different social constructs that we've placed on one another, we're human. We're dealing with a virus that is attacking our humanity, that is affecting our social lives as well, too. And so it makes me think about this short poem that I wrote that goes, I am not my struggles. I am not my pain. They are just roadblocks that prove how far I came. And so I wrote that poem or quote mainly because I think it's very easy for many of us to be defined by our experiences, to be defined by these times, to look at these times and say, I should have, could have, would have done more. 
And there's something about taking life for granted that many of us deal with because we wake up each day and we go to bed and then we do it all over again the next day. And so I think there's something important about us not being defined by our shortcomings or some of the trauma that's come up for us, but there's something to be said about us truly taking the time to recognize the opportunity here, the opportunity to build, to learn, to grow, to connect in a way that we've never connected before, right? So I moved. I don't know if this experience, you know, I, I don't know if it's reversible. I'm hoping that folks can take it as a reminder of what's to come and how they can be better humans for others in the future. Thank you so much for your time, for sharing your poetry, Randall, and I wish you good luck with your work. And I hope you can bring some healing through people going through a hard time right now. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me today. I was in conversation with spoken word artist and now Ontario's poet laureate, Randall Ajay. That's it for today. Thanks so much for listening. This Matters is hosted and produced by me, Sabai Tazaz, Adrian Chung, and Raju Motor. Produced and mixed by Sean Pattenham, and our director of programming is JP Fozo. Our show theme music is by So Called, and our episode music is by Mike DeAngelis. We want to hear what stories matter to you. Please send us comments, questions, or ideas to thismatters at thestar.ca. Please consider supporting the journalism the Toronto Star Newsroom does at thestar.com. And don't forget to subscribe to This Matters on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Let's talk soon. Thank you.